Okay. So I don't particularly love the webinar format because I can't see uh, the attendees and it feels like I'm talking into space. <laughs> so throughout the, uh, throughout the presentation, if you guys want to ask any questions or have comments, please feel free to use the chat. And I will hopefully keep an eye on that and answer um, them as needed. So I guess I'll get started. Uh, good morning, everyone. I am Davina, uh, Davina Khan, and I'm from West Valley School District in Yakima, Washington. Um, our uh, presentation today is uh, a day in the classroom, a full approach on certification methods. So hopefully, uh, during this hour, I will take you on a journey through my classroom uh, with the hope that it will spark some ideas to use in yours. Um, so here's a picture of my classroom it's pre COVID. Um, during COVID, we've been back in the school uh, uh, in a hybrid format with masks on and six feet apart. So uh, you know, we've uh, not had such engagement, unfortunately, but uh, it's still been a pretty productive year. A lot of learning has happened in this past year. Um, so uh, moving on, a little bit about me. Um, Yakima, Washington is a valley that is about two hours, two and a half hours away from Seattle, Washington. So we're in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we grow uh the some of the country's most amazing apples and we have tons of orchards around here it's a very beautiful scenic um place to live uh i have two daughters um i have been teaching since 2016 um and currently i teach junior high which is seventh and eighth grade but starting fall i'm actually moving to our district's new school called the Innovation Center as the computer science and information technology program designer slash teacher. That's a very interesting title. Um, please feel free to follow me on Twitter at Davina Khan. And I believe you can get my email address from my profile on the certified website. Um, but if you don't see it, I will be happy to put it on chat. Uh, if after this presentation, there is any resource that you liked and you think you would need a copy of, feel free to email me or message me on Twitter. I will be happy to send it to you. I don't mind sharing my resources at all. Um, about my course that I teach current, uh, which I taught all of this, these past few years and things are gonna be changing actually uh from next year for me because this is just going to be a very tiny part of what i'll be teaching next year uh, so at the junior high this is a semester long course uh, it's a mandatory course for seventh graders it's called computer essentials 101 um, the goal is to cover powerpoint word and excel in that one semester program uh do we successfully do that yes we actually are able to do it and it's it's uh, very intense. Um, not every student gets certified in all three, uh, but many do. Uh, we have been leading in the state of Washington for the highest number of students certified at the middle school level. So uh, we, are, we really take this very seriously and we feel like uh, students getting certified uh, just gives them that, that feeling of being successful, it gives them these additional creden credentials to put on their um, future resumes. It gives them the knowledge, you know, to uh, incorporate uh, amazing Microsoft, uh, uh, you know, the, the apps and what it can provide to you and, you know, have very professional uh, documents throughout their uh, high school career and beyond. So, uh, you know, at school, we use Google products mainly, uh, but at seventh grade, we introduced them to Microsoft because that's industry relevant. So this is a little background about me and here are some beautiful apples that, um, you know, right now, it's, this, is, this is a picture I took in the fall. Right now it's beautiful, lush, green, 
orchards with blossoms, apple blossoms. It's just beautiful. Um, moving on to our topic for today. Uh, when I started teaching this class in 2016, um, within a few weeks of teaching this class, I had a realization that just because I know and have been using PowerPoint, Word, and Excel for years, and I felt like I was an expert in them, but just because I know it doesn't mean I can teach it, okay? And that was like, okay, I got to figure out how to teach this, right? Teach it successfully to these 12, 13, 14-year-olds who have a totally different mindset. They, they use computers for gaming. They use technology for, you know, lots of other purposes, but this kind of productivity, uh, it's, they are totally not used to it. A lot of students that come to us in seventh grade uh, don't even have um, uh, good keyboarding skills. They can't differentiate between an apostrophe and a comma. They, they haven't really, even though everybody, every student in our school district has a one-on-one uh, -on -one device, they all have Chromebooks. Um, somehow, you know, before seventh grade, they really haven't had a lot of exposure on um, these kind of productivity applications. So it's a little bit of a challenge getting them on board to even just navigate a desktop computer. So it's a huge shift from a Chromebook to a desktop computer. In our computer lab, as you saw, we have um, dual monitors for our students and uh, the, the vertical monitors are for them to keep their resources in the books and the horizontal, the landscape monitors are for them to actually be doing their work on. So it's a really neat setup, but it's a huge shift from using a Chromebook. So the first few days of school is spent on um, just helping them navigate through Windows 10, understanding how to what network drives are, understanding how to create folders and uh, use the start menu and so on and so forth. So once we have done all of that, we then we jump into the curriculum. Um, as a teacher, the first step is to get certified. Okay, so uh, before I started teaching, what I did was I went, at, went ahead and took all the Microsoft uh, MOS certification tests in all, this, all the apps, okay, PowerPoint, Word, and Excel. Um, the reason for that is not just, you know, just to test my own level and understanding, but to understand the structure and format of the test. So I feel like more than the test itself, the, um, language of the test is a little bit tricky. Uh, so understanding what they're asking for and, you know, breaking it down for young students is, I think, was very important for me. Um, a lot of students get intimidated by the terminology, by the, by the language used in the test. So by getting certified myself, I was able to uh, now approach my teaching from a different standpoint. So the next step is to pick a teaching and learning resource. And we, um, uh, I have used both CCN Learning and Microsoft Imagine Academy as resources. Okay, I've gone back and forth. And um, I'm not getting paid to say this, but I really like the CCN Learning uh, curriculum. I feel like it's more, it's, it's less intimidating. It's uh, very simple to use. And uh, it's very clean. It's not super complex. It's very, they, they also have fewer chapters. Uh, they've kind of condensed and grouped different concepts together. So I prefer that since the last couple of years, I've been using uh, CCI Learning and I've been super impressed. Um, now, with that said, uh, I'm going to go ahead and dissect a day in my class. Um, so these are the five tools that I use. I'm going to break each one, each of these down and share examples with you all. Uh, but these are the five tools that I use in uh, teaching. Um, so the very first thing is the daily agenda. So I've created a daily agenda document. Um, and 
then I have an entry task, okay? Then we have these steps, uh, steps to learning the lesson. Then we have a mock test, and then we have them do a Jasper Active benchmark, okay? So the last few years we've been getting Jasper Active free. Uh, if you uh, have a ranking in the state, then CCI Learning is part of the scholarship they give you um, Jasper Active for free. And it's been great. It's been a great tool. In this past year, COVID has been amazing. It's been very helpful. We've actually used the lessons for learning as well. Earlier, we just used Jasper Active for practicing the benchmark. All right. So um, I'm going to break each one of these five tools down for you all. And uh, this presentation is also available on the website, on the certified website in my profile. Uh, I've uploaded it as a PDF, so hopefully that would help if you need to um, you know, go back and refer to something. So let's start off with the daily agenda. So um, I'm gonna be showing you what my daily agenda looks like, but it's a live document, which uh, is made either on uh, Google Slides or PowerPoint, hopefully PowerPoint since we're teaching Microsoft. Um, the thing is that this past year, our district has required us to use um, a Google Classroom instead of Microsoft Teams. They've had all the teachers use the same learning management system in order to pull data for their, um, you know, just to see student engagement and, and teacher engagement and so on and so forth. So during this pandemic, we've all switched over to Google Classroom um, and, uh, you know, Microsoft Teams is amazing, and next year we're going to go back to using that. But this what this past year, it's been Google Classroom. So a lot of my stuff has kind of moved. All of my a lot of my resources moved to the Google platform. Um, so the daily agenda document that I have been uh, using that I created is a one stop shop for all student needs. I use it as a reference. It has detailed guidelines, works as, as a lesson planner, and provides a pacing reference for next year. So this is what my agenda looks like. Um, I uh, create a slideshow, essentially, and share it with my students so they can view it. Every morning when they come into class, their first job is to log into their computers and pull up this agenda document. They then scroll down to the date, um, the date of uh, that day, and they pull up and see what their entry task is, what the classwork is for the day. It also has their learning objectives, um, reminders, graded project. And I've had different formats for the agenda, but they essentially do the same thing. It's their to-do list or task list, reminders, uh, hyperlinks to many different resources. So everything that they need to succeed in my classroom is on this daily agenda. And I keep building it every single day. I would be very happy to share uh, that with you. I will put my email um, on chat. And if you guys need anything from me, please feel free to email me. So that way I can um, share things with you. I am putting my email as we speak. All right, um, so please go ahead and email me and I will be happy to share links off my agenda with you. You can you can do whatever you want with it. And um, uh, just, you know, I have many formats, actually many designs, uh, but I'm sharing one that was super loaded with you all. So you get an idea of how I use this. So as you can see, this first picture is sort of like the main page for the day. And from it, you can, get to many different um, links, okay? So uh, like I break down, how do you actually read instructions um, on the book that's provided by Microsoft or by CCI Learning? Um, I have success criteria. I have detailed rubrics of, of projects that I have them do. I have a visual in infographic on um, what the steps are to getting certified, checklists, so on and so forth on the agenda. So the agenda document is very, very important to, 
to me and I would like to show you actually um, the here is a agenda for you and as you can see this has 137 slides in it this particular document has 137 slides starting from day one of school um, and I keep I have a new slide for every day and it's actually very easy all I do is duplicate the previous day and I just add new content um, I also throw in many other pieces in between and kids just follow along. So, uh, oh, you cannot see it. I'm sorry. Let me um, actually, I think I have my share screen on a different format. Hold on one second. I will fix that in just a moment. All right. There we go. Can you see it now? All right, great. Uh, my email, uh, let me see if I can send it, or type it out again, all right? There we go. Um, all right, so here is my agenda, starting from day one of school all the way down to the very end. And I really, really enjoy using this because it saves me. It's, it serves like serves as a lesson planning tool for me as well. Um, helps kids focus and go where they have to. It has links to so many different um, uh, documents that they need for to be successful in the classroom. So I um, will share this with whoever would like it. Um, now, can you guys see my uh, presentation again, my uh, today's presentation again? Okay, great. So uh, that was the agenda. Now moving on to um, the entry task. Okay, so the very first thing I have them do after they pull up the agenda is an entry task. And this could be made on Microsoft Forms or uh, Google Form, whatever you're using, okay? And um, I do grade it, all right? Uh, okay, I have to stop share and share my thing again. No worries. All right. Awesome. So entry task. Now here's an example. I usually just put one question on the entry task. I don't want to uh, overload them because as you know, the curriculum itself is pretty rigorous. So uh, we, uh, what I do over here is I ask them one key question from whatever lesson they're working on um, or a concept that the students have been struggling with, okay? So for example, here's just an example of an entry task. It's a form and it's auto graded, obviously, so it saves me work as well. But um, I can get a lot of valuable data from that entry task. Uh, it reveals where your students are at, okay? So if a lot of kids got that question wrong, I know I can go back and reinforce that. Um, so, so that's my entry task. Um, once in a while, I don't ask them a content related question and just ask them a silly random question about whether they like Coke or Pepsi or something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, this is uh, very important and students know that they, they would have an entry task unless otherwise specified on their agenda. Third, step number three, and now this slide is probably the most important slide, is learning the lesson. So. Learning the lesson has several steps. And because I deal with younger kids, okay, I know that I have to uh, attack their brains from a totally different standpoint. It's, I've, you know, the older the kids are, uh, 
I feel like the rigor may not need to be the same as it is for middle school students. These guys, for them to be that productive, uh, it does take a lot of uh, involved, you know, intentional uh, assignment of activities. So starting uh, off, I go over lesson objectives, okay? Now, lesson objectives, if you download the curriculum from CCI Learning, uh, they, have a they have a lot of teacher resources. And these teacher resources uh, uh, come with lesson plans, okay? They also come with a slideshow for each lesson and they all have the lesson objectives listed out. So it's, you don't even have to make your own. Maybe what you can do is use what CCI Learning has provided and break it down in simpler language if needed. So we start over with the lesson objectives and this is really important uh, because the students need to understand um, how it's tied into the competencies. And I'm gonna share a student tracker with you later on, uh, but there are certain competencies that need to be completed before they can pass the, the certification test. So these objectives are tied into those. Um, also, it kind of keeps the brains in sync with yours and they know what they're doing. Now, if an admin walks in at any time, they will know uh, what the students are learning. Uh, so let's, let me show you an example. Here is a screenshot from CCI Learning's slideshow. Um, I had downloaded their um, whole package, okay? Uh, and there is a link over there on the next slide. Uh, you guys have, uh, access to that link from my presentation uh, material. So once you're on their website, uh, you can download the package. And this is an example of a lesson objective, um, which they have already done. And as you can see, this is a slideshow. So they have, uh, uh, you know, uh, instructions as well, like showing you how to do certain things in that lesson. So we go over each of these objectives and uh, I ask students uh, if they understand, you know, I go over some important terminology as well. And like, for example, maybe they don't understand the difference between editing and formatting. Maybe they don't understand the meaning of, um, you know, what exactly is a parameter? Uh, what is importing? You know, so I try to, um, is CCI instruction expensive? No, if you have an account with uh, them, like you have Jasper Active, all of this is free. So it's uh, it's really helpful. Um, if uh, you can actually write to them and get a quote for your organization, it's not that expensive, honestly. I think, I think it's pretty worth it. So um, these are, this is an example of a lesson objective. After I've gone over the lesson objectives, I, um, oh, by the way, these are the links to CCI Learning and Imagine Academy, whatever you use. Um, download their package, okay, their instruction, instructor resources. The next step after the objectives is I make students the teachers. So I usually pick a student in my classroom to come over to my computer. My computer is connected to the classroom projector and I will have them demonstrate. So if we are learning how to insert a chart in a document or to format a chart, I will be talking and I will have the students all open up a blank document on their computers while this student teacher demonstrates how to do it on the projector. It's really exciting for the students because they feel like they have this position of you know, power. So every time I start a new lesson or if I am reinforcing concepts, I have kids um, you know, raise their hands and, oh, I would like to volunteer to, to project, to be the demonstrator for this lesson. So they will come in and all the other students will follow. The only thing I do is walk around, make sure everybody's on the same page and talk and say, all right, guys, so there's several ways of inserting a chart in your document. This is how you, this is the ribbon. I want you all to click on the insert tab. So while I'm talking, the student is actually doing the demonstration. All the other students are following along. 
So this method I feel has been really engaging for kids in my age group. Um, after we have done um, that piece, I now start giving real examples. This is super important for students to understand, I feel, okay? So our students, because they're little, they may have not never uh, really created a table before, okay? Um, so I wanna, you know, walk them through why we even need to have tables. Uh, so I give them an example over here uh, and say, okay, guys, this is a list of a uh, breakdown of how many students there are in each class period. What information did you get from this bulleted list? So the students will say period one has 22 students. It has 10 girls, 12 boys. Period two has 26 students, 13 boys and 13 girls. So then I'll go over and say, by the way, how many levels on this list? So I'm reinforcing a concept that we've learned before. And then I ask them, is this the best way to represent the data? Why? And so students will be like, no, this is confusing. And we'll be like, okay, what should we do? So we are now gonna convert this list into a table, okay? So it looks so much better as a table. And so, so I like to give these students, uh, I, uh, you know, relevant examples uh, where they can say, oh, that's why we're learning how to create a table, okay? And uh, connect concepts from previous lessons into today's lesson. So while this, this exercise may seem unimportant for a high school student, for middle school students, it really helps them to understand the concept and the reason why we are learning something. So after we are done with giving real life examples, I actually then ask them to look at their agendas and figure out what page numbers they're supposed to be working on, okay? I now, all students have a copy of the Jasper Active book, uh, sorry, the CCI Learning book that I had downloaded earlier. I've made that copy available to all my students and I assign page numbers to them and say, all right, guys, today you're working on pages 27 to 42, and you have to do all the learn to activities on those pages. Now that's for practice, that's not graded. And what I do at that point is I walk around. My goal is to literally just walk around and make sure students are uh, doing their work and practicing. Once they have practiced, from the book, I assign a graded project, all right? Now the graded project is sort of like a summary of all the skills that they have learned in that particular lesson, all right? So what does a graded project look like? Well, um, so somebody's asking this question, does Jasper Active include Outlook 365? I actually don't know the answer to that question. I don't think it does. I haven't seen that. Um, okay, so graded project, I usually create my own, all right? So a lot of you might say, oh my gosh, that's too much hard work. Uh, but no, it isn't because remember, uh, I teach this class one semester and I teach the same class the next semester. So if I do the work once, I can actually take it over for the next semester as well. So, um, I create my own graded project and I would like to show you guys an example of my graded project, okay? Um, so, and again, remember if anybody would like anything from me, please feel free to email me. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm gonna show you a copy of uh, a graded project, okay? I just need one quick moment here. And I will share my screen one more time. All right, so the graded project obviously is linked um, to their on their agendas so they can access it easily. Remember, I try to make it as simple for uh, my students as possible. Um, so I link um, the project. Uh, it's a live Microsoft uh, PowerPoint 
uh, format. So here is the project. It says this is project four. So if there are eight lessons, I have eight projects and each of them are numbered. So project four, complete all tasks and call teacher for grading. Each task is worth one point and goes into your grade book as a separate assignment. So zero out of one is an F and a one out of one is an A. So this is like the standards-based grading uh, model that we use. And uh, now uh, some people have said, okay, you go down to each student to grade their work. No, not really. And I will tell you what I do instead. So once the students have completed a project, and here's an example, task one, standard 3.1.1. Okay, I have the standard listed. So when I enter uh, their grades in their Skyward grading system, um, I put the, put the grade per standard. And also later when I show you the student tracker, it really helps them to assess themselves if they understand what standard that they what standard they worked on. So I have tasks, okay? And I try to um, kind of copy the format of the real test. So I wanna make sure, because I've taken the real test myself, remember, I can now remember what were the key skills on the test and I try to incorporate those into projects. So the kids remember the terminology and the format. So the kids complete the lesson and at the very end, I have a slide that says, your final project slide should look like this. So they can actually go back and look at the work that they created and uh, okay, they'll be like, hmm, my slide three doesn't quite look like this. So I give them a chance to go back and fix their own work. The idea is for them to understand how to do something. And I keep uh, giving them chances to learn that skill and master it. So I create eight projects, okay, because there are eight lessons. Uh, again, that's an example, it might change next year. Um, so this is just PowerPoint. We do the same thing for Word and Excel as well. Um, and uh, the students just go through it. And when they're done, they raise their hand. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen one more time um, and get back to our main uh, presentation. Once they have done the graded project, now I will go ahead and grade the project of the first couple of people who finish it, but then I go ahead and give my students the chance to grade their peers' work. All right, so I give them a clipboard and here's a picture of uh, the student holding a clipboard. Somebody finished a project and there's, I have two or three students with clipboards and a printout, okay? Um, and again, you know, every class is, you know, I have the same number of students, and pretty much similar number of students in each of my class periods. I have five, actually I have three class periods, usually I have two of my Python class, but three class periods of students. <clears throat> I have their names listed out. The competencies on uh, an Excel sheet, and these students have a printout of these and they go around and they give them a grade, all right? So it's peer grading and uh, it's, it's amazing, all right? Um, there are eight PowerPoint lessons, so therefore there are eight projects, yes, um, in PowerPoint, in, if you're using the CCI learning curriculum. If you're using the Imagine Academy curriculum, it, I think there are 11 chapters. So it totally depends on what curricul curriculum you're using. Um, I, like I said, really enjoyed using the CCI learning one because they were very simple. Um, but I created my own graded projects. If you're using the Microsoft Imagine Academy um, curriculum, I believe there's a graded project at the end of it. Uh, but I just used this. I thought this was, this was way simpler for me to use. So I've already printed out these uh, Excel uh, sheets and given put them on a clipboard for each of my graders. 
And now those guys are walking around the room and grading their peers. Because remember, I already graded them and they most likely already got 100% on their project. And now they are going around and grading. And I tell you, these kids love doing that. They are, they're tough graders, okay? Um, they, and what I really like is if a student got something wrong, they have been instructed by me to teach them how to do it right. So not only are they busy, they are also learning uh, by teaching. And, and I, it, this dynamic has worked so well in my classroom. Uh, there is so much energy and students are, are just super excited to be the graders. So next time they wanna finish up their project really fast. And you will hardly see a student just sitting down um, you know, bored or uh, not focused because they have a um, they have the interest to be a peer grader. So I uh, have really enjoyed doing this in class. Unfortunately, this year uh, during COVID, it wasn't possible because there were so many restrictions. Uh, but next year, hopefully, we'll get back to doing that. Um, so we've gotten to this point, uh, peer grading, and after students are done uh, with that lesson, they uh, have to go to the student tracker. Now the student tracker, actually, I am super excited about the student tracker that I created. Again, it's a spreadsheet. It has a list of all the competencies. And if you look at the bottom here, you'll see that there are three, there are four tabs, okay? One is PowerPoint, one is Word, one is Excel, and one is digital literacy, which is something we also teach. Um, and each of the tabs has all the competencies, standards listed. And now at the end of the lesson, the student rates and assesses themselves, okay? So if let's say that Jackie uh, wasn't very happy with her understanding of how to create a slide layout, she will say, I don't understand yet. She'll click that box there. If she thinks that uh, she's beginning to understand this, but with some help, she'll give herself a check mark right there. If she feels like she can understand this and do this by herself, she'll get put a check mark there. And if she thinks that she understands this but so well that she can teach someone else and she gives her checkbox here. And, and I tell the students that they uh, their goal is by the end of the unit, um, each of these courses is a unit, right? The PowerPoint is one unit, Word is one unit, Excel is another unit. So at the end of each unit, their goal is to convert all the check marks from columns one, two and three to column four, okay? And when they have all the check, uh, all the column four check marks filled in, that's when they're ready for the next step, which is the Jasper Active Benchmark for practice, all right? How many minutes are each of my classes? They're an hour long, okay, 56 minutes. Um, so that, that helps. Uh, so, um, in one semester, like I said, it takes me uh, PowerPoint. Actually, I actually spend a lot of time in PowerPoint because I feel like once they understand how to navigate the ribbon and understand basic concepts, they can really get Word very easily. And then I spend a lot more time in Excel as well. Um, not every student, however, gets certified in Excel because it's a little bit harder, uh, but I do have quite a few. So. Um, this is the, these are the steps which I use um, in my class to learn a lesson. And uh, once we have completed a lesson, uh, we then, uh, you know, move on to the next. Now, here is an example of a practice exercise from the CCI learning book, okay? Um, you can see that they have learned to modify a table. So they have learned two activities for every lesson. Uh, some lessons have five, some have two, some have 10. Uh, so there's many, and that's, that's the practice part. 
Okay, so when if you go back to slide 10 here, when we are doing the practice exercises from the book, that's what a practice exercise looks like. Um, and uh, for power, they have them color coded. So PowerPoint is orange and Microsoft Word is blue and Excel is green. How much time do you spend on PowerPoint? I, if I, my course starts in September, actually August 28th, the first week I'm actually just teaching kids how to use um, uh, Windows 10. Um, so I would say that I probably spend from September through end of October um with powerpoint powerpoint um so that's about six weeks six to six to seven weeks now remember that there are always going to be students who are not at pace or they're a little bit behind and that's fine um sometimes i have student leaders you know kids who have finished their unit who have extra time they're working on another unit or they've even finished that, they're a little bit ahead, I will have them um, mentor the students who need extra help. So, or I will help those students and the other students can help each other. Um, so this year, one thing I did that really helped was I had a live Zoom session going on for tech support during class. So while the students were on their desktop computers, they had their Chromebooks open on their desks with a zoom they were logged into a live zoom session where a designated student was the tech helper and that if they were stuck at a problem they could uh, ask that student another thing which i did was create videos of solving these learn tools all right um and uh the students had access to my youtube channel um or links to the video and they could go back let's say they were not in school they missed school because of covid or whatever it was they were able to go back and look at the videos and learn how to do that activity if they missed the demonstration of it in class um so that was another really important tool um so i make it really easy for my students um here's a quick reference and this is when i was using the microsoft uh, Imagine Academy curriculum and they had uh, 11 lessons. Um, I would list, I would have a table like this on the agenda document uh, for them uh, to know which um, page numbers they had to work on for which lesson. Okay, so I just try to make it easy for the students so they don't have to keep asking me, what am I supposed to be working on? Uh, what page was I supposed to be on? Uh, so on and so forth. Okay. Um, Another tool that has been really, really helpful to reinforce concepts is a mock test. Okay, a mock test. Again, this is a review of all the competencies. It is tailored after the real test. It helps to solidify understanding terminology and provides practice, and you can make your own. So I just made my own. All I did was, again, you'd be like, oh my gosh, how much time did she spend on this? Not a whole lot, honestly. Um, what I did is I created a fake test. And um, so every slide is a task, is a separate task. It looks like this. I know in, in black is the task itself, and in red text is the instructions on how to do it, okay? If you guys have Jasper Active, then um, the Jasper Active lessons are sort of the same concept, uh, but normally I just use Jasper Active for the benchmark, okay? Uh, the benchmark test is great because there's a self-timer. I can, I can send you, if you can just email me, I will send you everything you need. Um, one thing I have to tell you is that some of them might be older, like older versions. Right now we're currently using Office 2019, but earlier when we were using 2016, this might be from that. So you can just go ahead and modify it according to uh, the new uh, version of whichever version of Microsoft Office you're using. Um, so the mock test, I feel, is really good. You know why? 
because by the time students get to um, the last couple of chapters, they might have forgotten the previous chapters. So this helps them to remember what they learned three weeks ago. So um, I have used geometrics practice exams. Yes, I have used geometrics practice exams. Um, again, I have to tell you that if I'm using too much software to teach them a software, it's kind of confusing sometimes for little for these middle schoolers. All right. I feel like doing all of these crazy things that I do has been really helpful in uh, the kids understanding how to how to do those skills. Um, so there's a mock test here. And finally, the last step is your Jasper Active benchmark. OK, so that's a summative assessment. Practice, practice, practice. I tell the students that they need to score a minimum of 90% on the benchmark in 30 minutes for them to say, Mrs. Khan, I'm ready for the certification exam. I don't let them take the certification exam until they have scored 90% in 30 minutes. Now, even though the actual exam is 50 minutes long, it's I want the students not to be stressed out when they're taking the exam. I want them to have extra time to go over all the questions they may have flagged. So giving them a goal of finishing this in 30 minutes is um, it has actually been working out great. Every time they complete a benchmark, I reset it so that they can go back and do it again and again and again. Um, so um, it may seem like uh, my classroom is a lot of chaos, but it's not. It just, I always have groups. Like I'll have five kids who are at this level, at step number five. I'll have 10 kids who are at step number four. I'll have, you know, uh, maybe three kids who are still on their lessons. So I have kids at different levels, but I have groups. So I can tackle groups at a time. And I can put other students to help me. So um, that's the final step, and then they take their test. Now, I have a lot of incentives in my classroom. This slide is part of the agenda. Every time I have students getting certified, I start typing their names on, uh, on this MCWA list, okay? Mind-blowing, committed, wonderful, all-stars. I did not come up with that. This was my students who came up with this title. Uh, I asked them, what would you like to be called, you guys who have received a certification? And they said, we want to be called a mind-blowing, committed, wonderful all-stars. So that's what it is. So everybody looks for the name on there. And they're like, oh, my goodness, this person's name is on there. This person's name, I want my name to be on there. And this is an ever-growing list. So a lot of incentives. Also, students who get certified in all three, I give them a little a little gift card from Amazon, um, and they love that, okay? Um, so, and they, they have their names called out on our, on our uh, announcement uh, at the start of school. Uh, they also have their certificate uh, pasted on the wall of fame outside my classroom. So they are pretty excited about that. They, their parents also receive a special email from me, uh, talking about the student and, and how hard they worked and a copy of their certification. Um, I also create a map, which again is, a, is on the agenda, a full semester checklist of products, of projects. Um, and I have these, uh, you know, so kids kind of have a visual on what they're supposed to do, all right? Um, all of this is, of course, in the presentation that I've already shared with you all. So I'm just gonna go through it quickly since we don't have a lot of time. Um, so there is a visual, okay? Students can, if, if a parent asks, what are you teaching? I can just say, here's the map. Okay, this is what we're doing this semester. Um, some best practices, uh, break down instructions in the book. Okay, like I said, the book instructions are a little bit, I think they're tailored towards high school students. And because I'm teaching middle school, I need to break down some sentences. Um, teach students how to navigate the ribbon. Okay, so a lot of students don't understand 
you know, the little dialogue box launchers, sometimes they don't understand that within each group on the ribbon, there are several other amazing hidden functions. They don't, uh, sometimes students that don't understand that when they click on an object, a new set of tools appears on the ribbon. So there's certain things that I keep going over, over and over again, so they can, um, they can troubleshoot and they can try to think in their head, okay, the, the task is to insert a table. The clue is in the task. Okay, I'll find it in the insert tab because I have to insert a table. So they'll look on the insert tab of the ribbon. So, you know, things like that. I go over that over and over again. Um, explain why they are learning that skill, okay? Pay attention to parts of content that students struggle with and address those. So here's an example. There's two um, uh, images here. Um, I, When I sense that my kids are struggling in a certain area, I try to list it out so they can go back and, and examine those. So I feel like students were having trouble with how to insert slides from another presentation, how to insert slides from an outline, or edit the data for a chart or create a custom slide show. For example, I will make a list and say, I want you guys to go back and, and, and figure out how to do these things or ask me and I will show you how to do these things. So um, celebrate success, take pictures, tweet, all right? Uh, post all student resources in one place and my place is the agenda. Uh, use your learning management system, uh, system tactfully. So if you're using Teams, um, make sure you post a student tracker, a copy for each student. Post your quizzes. Again, the quizzes I just get off of the CCI learning resources. They have quizzes there already. Um, and I just kind of change the format and put them in a Microsoft form so uh, it's easier to grade. Um, I do end of lesson projects. Like I said, I create my own. Um, and entry task. I also have a YouTube channel um, um, or we've been using Loom this year to post video tutorials. So I do have students on IEPs and 504s and sometimes they need uh, additional resources to go over uh, tasks and skills and how to do certain things. They want to be able to go back, pause, rewind and do it again. Um, and just classroom instruction is not enough for them. So I have created different videos uh, for instruction as well. Um, here are some pictures from uh, my classes. We have a pizza party for the class that had the highest number of certifications. Um, they know that from the very first day of school that the class that will have the highest number of certifications gets a pizza party. We have a music, we, we we have dances and and uh, talent shows and that one hour of their last day of uh, class that semester is just fun time. Um, so uh, here you can see kids holding up their certificates. I send pictures to their parents, put it on my website, and um, <clears throat> yeah. So it's we make a pretty big deal. Uh, uh, when, when a student gets a certification, I have them come up front, share the testimonial, um, share what they feared most, what they overcame during this process, any tips for other students. And it's so insightful to hear kids. You know, when I say, uh, say something, the kids listen, but when another kid tells them the same thing, they listen better. Uh, so it's it's really a fun experience, and um, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. Um, I can shop, stop sharing my screen at this point. Um, I would love to answer any questions you may have. Uh, so please um, ask away. Thank you.
thank you so much. And if you guys, like I said, need anything from me, please feel free to um, email me. I love sharing my resources. I think that we all are in this together and uh, we just learn from each other. So thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. Um, somebody's asking, have I noticed a difference in learning from pre-COVID to now? Uh, well, um, yes, during COVID, we had to change a lot of things. So, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a very, um, we had to lower our standards and our expectations this year, but it was okay. I think by the end of it, we you know, as long as we're able to progress in some way, we're fine. Obviously it was not the same as the used the previous years. Um, thank you, thank you so much, you guys. I really appreciate that. I have used Mike's YouTube videos. Yes, that, those are the videos I link on my agenda. And I have students uh, look at those before they take their test. I love Mike's videos on YouTube. Thank you. Yep. Um, there are many. I just do a lot of YouTube searches and I try to find uh, practice tests, you know, MOS 2019 practice tests, just to give kids an ex exposure to what the real test looks like. Yeah. Oh, wow. I am so thankful to you guys for all of your comments and I hope to collaborate with you in the future. Uh, totally, totally um, looking forward to hopefully running into some of you in the future in um, Dallas next year. I heard that we're going to have uh, this conference in Dallas next year. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. I guess I should go ahead and end this in a minute or so. <laughs> Bye guys. Have a great rest of the conference.